Here is the reason why majority of black women are behind in the dating game, behind in the marital game, they're not getting married and they cannot secure or they have not been securing men who provide. And the main reason why is honestly, honestly speaking, it's first societal programming and second, the way that we raise our children, which is why I encourage every black woman that's watching this video, even if you made mistakes and you already have children, be the person that breaks the pattern in the family, especially in regards to the selection of men. Let's be honest. Women who are of other cultures as white women, um, Middle Eastern women, Asian women, they are taught to target and date and pursue men who are providers, someone or a man who has something to offer. Because in those cultures, when the father gives their daughter away to that man, they don't have the expectation in their mind that their daughter is going to have to struggle, work hard, work double shifts. They feel like we're giving our precious flower away to you. Here she is. Make sure you take good care of her and make sure you're able to provide for her. But in the black community, we're taught different. We're taught to date someone just because you like them. Oh, he's not working. It's okay, girl. Like, girl, hold him down. Hold him down. Um, he doesn't have much going on. Hold him down. Just, 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 just work it out. Um, stick it out. We're kind of taught that struggle narrative. That narrative of of hard work and hard labor, and and we're taught. But why would you be doing hard labor if you have a man present that you are in a relationship with? That's the difference. And there was a point in time I was working in a luxury firm. Um, it was predominantly the luxury firm was predominantly a Caucasian luxury firm. And, you know, we would have girl talk, like all the associates, like it was really chill vibes. We would all like sit down in the lunchroom and just talk about like girl stuff. Everyone's dating someone new, you know, catching up. And I noticed that the Caucasian women in there and the Middle Eastern women in there and even the Latin women in there, their first question when anyone in our group was dating a man, their first question was, okay, what does he do for a living? That was always the first question. It wasn't, do you like him? Do you love him? Does he treat you nicely? <laughs> no, it was, that was never the first question. And as I grew up and I matured, it totally dawned on me. And I'm like, no wonder they are so far economically with marriages and with relationships because they're, the first thing that they look at is financial security. Black women, on the other hand, that is not the first thing that they look at unless they're from African cultures. African women are, you know, African women are totally different when it comes to American women as far as how they date. That man has to be, if they're going to check bank statements <laughs> before the marriage is even legalized, they're going to check bank statements. That's how it is in Africa. So props to African women. They have that on lock as far as um, black women. But it dawned on me and I'm like, this is the problem. Like this is, this is it right here. Why are African-American women not vetting men properly? Why aren't they choosing men who are educated? Why are they not looking for men who have something to offer? Why are they looking for men that they have to work with or slave with? Majority of the African-American women that I know that are highly educated, hyper-educated, they take care of their husbands. Their husbands are house husbands. And I've seen that trend. And when I was a kid, I knew it wasn't right. When I was younger, I knew it didn't make sense. But now that I'm older, I'm like, here. Shalom. Call Laila Yahweh. Hashem Yahweh Shai. Hashem Kankadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work. In truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson the Pookie and Ray Ray principle. So when we use the term Pookie and Ray Ray, we're talking about low-level, low-caliber, low-quality men.
that have a boy's mindset. They're not kingdom minded. They're not kingdom focused. They have a very minute span of perspective. They're only interested in opening up a small candy shop on the corner, if you will. So when you look at the mindset of a man of the Lord, he's thinking big. He's not thinking to be an employee, but he's thinking as a ruler over employers, a corporate mindset, a chief executive mindset, which is really bigger than that because it's looking at being a resource owner, a land owner, a gold and silver owner. So the true high value man is a man of the Lord, which spiritually is a part of the tabernacle of the men of the house of David. And many Israelites don't know our history, that our men were the kings over the nations under the house of David. So it's beyond their reality to be able to conceive something of such a great feat. They're only thinking on a low level. They don't believe that the Israelites ruled over the ancient world, followed by King Solomon and followed by the subsequent kings of Israel and Jerusalem and Judah. So I want to go here. So the woman was never made or created to have to look or be forced to look for husband-like qualities. The man, your father, was charged with that responsibility to find husband qualities. You're not created to be able to discern the traits and characteristics of a quality, high value, high caliber man. Your father was charged with that responsibility. And we're going to get that. I believe it's in Numbers chapter 30. Let's go here first. So she mentioned the flower, which is the virginity of a young woman, a young damsel. Let's go to Sirach 42. And let's go to verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care of her taketh away sleep when she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and being married, lest she should be hated. So your virginity is preserved for your husband. In order to demand a traditional man, then you must be traditional, untouched, a virgin. That is where you're justified to wear a pure white dress. So the father protects that sacred purity and loses sleep at night. Because if we depend on, this is the Pookie and Ray Ray principle. Your future bride, which is your future wife, will be abused through too much liberty. What do I mean? Ran through, okay? Ghetto gag, deep dug, you name it, okay? And in this system, this behavior has been normalized. A man's sperm puts his spirit on that woman. So if she has multiple masculine spirits on her, she gets mentally deranged. Sirach 42 and 10. In her virginity, let's go back to 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, 
and the care for her taketh away sleep when she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, being married, lest she should be hated. So the father is protecting her virginity until she has sex. Marriage is sexual intercourse. To marry means to be joined unto or merge unto, to become one. So that man's sperm puts his spirit on that woman. So she takes on some of his characteristics and traits and some of his mindset. Verse 11. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter, lest she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies, and a byword in the city, and a reproach among the people, and make thee ashamed before the multitude. So she gets ran through. And then by the time you marry her, you're like, what the hell is this? It's a slop bucket. That's what it is, a slop bucket. But this type of debauchery, debauchery, excuse me, has been normalized here. <clears throat> and we're told to deal with it. It's okay. And pay top dollar for a 1967, uh, 1967, what's that damn old car? Uh, what's that old car called? Basically, new prices for an old used up vessel is what I'm getting at. There's a vehicle. I think it's called a Punta, a nineteen, a Penta. That's what it's called. Let me look it up. <clears throat> so we're being told to expect a new value or new glorious expectations on a used up vessel. Let's, let's, let's look up. This is where my mind is taking me right now. Pinto. That's what I'm talking about. The hell is this? So we're investing top dollar into a used up vessel, which it, it doesn't make sense to do this. This is ridiculous. Imagine me presenting this to you and say, hope Join unto this a 1967 Pinto and I'm going to charge you $13 million. It does not make sense. So the Pookie and Ray Ray principle, the, when you look at these young men, they're tapping into the mindset of young girls just wanting to have fun. Girls just want to have fun. They even made a song on that. I think it was Cindy Lauper. So you got 30% of young black men that are married, about 52% young so-called black men with no kids, so they're single, and about 18% of these young single men with no kids, the same women are being shared with these 18% Pookies and Ray Rays that are single. So these men are generally low grade, low caliber men looking to do just that, just have fun. So you wind up with a woman in her 30s or up, a 1967 Pinto metaphor, looking for a high grade, high quality man of the Lord with a king mentality. It doesn't add up. And her best years were given to, you got it, Pookies and Ray Rays. Let's go here to Sirach 26 and 10. So you gave your best years away to low-level men. And then you expect a king at your lowest point, you expect the highest value man of the land. 
So this daughter of Babylon, American system, constitutes failure, epic failure. Let's go to Sirach 26 and, nine, and 8. A drunken woman and a gather abroad causeth great anger, and she will not cover her shame, her own shame. So she also brings shame to the family name, which starts with the father, ahead of the household, according to the Bible. A drunken woman and a getter abroad cause of great anger, and she will not cover her own shame. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. So these gangbangers, thugs, these career criminals, for lack of better words, take the best years of your future bride away. And now she's got all their spirits on them. Murderers, drug dealers, Rapists, if you will. You see, the candy store owner mentality rather than a ruler mentality. Let's get one more. So the father was charged with the responsibility of choosing his daughter's future husband. What in the hell does a young 12, 13, 14, 15 year old girl know about choosing a stable man, a powerful man. What is that? Let's go here real quick. Sirach 25 and 10. She don't know anything about choosing a powerful, stable man built on wisdom that walks in wisdom. Sirach 25 Verse 9, let's go to verse 8. Well is him that dwelleth with a wife of understanding, and that have not slipped with his tongue, and that have not served a man more unworthy than himself. Well is he that hath found prudence, and he that speaketh in the ears of them that will hear. Oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom, yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. So the men of the tabernacle of David built a dynasty of rulership through the fear of the Lord, which started with King David, followed by the subsequent kings and priests of the Davidic dynasty. That's the man to follow who chooses your future husband. You see? So birds of the same feather flock together. Simps choose simps. Kings choose kings. Priests choose king, uh, priests. You see? Priests to priests, kings to kings. Simps to simps. Let's close out here. So this entire society is upside down, disorderly, unruly. This girls just want to have fun mindset. No order, no structure. 70% of the so-called Negro households are led by single mothers. So the entire household is driven by emotions, feelings sentimental things. Numbers 30, the book of Numbers, chapter 30. See, let's go to verse, let's go to verse two. We got to go to one. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which the Lord hath commanded when we read Numbers 1 and 18, these heads are the fathers. 
So this goes back to the law. And Numbers 27, verse 16 and 17. Let me see real quick. The head of the congregation. The man was chosen to be the head of the household. Nope, let's do this. I think it's Numbers 27. Yeah, it is. See, Numbers 27, verse 16. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them and may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. So over 70% of the so-called Negro family households are led by women. And many of our families are dysfunctional, unstable, no structure, no guidance, no direction, no stability. Let's go back to Numbers 30 and 1. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Ban Yeshuala, or sons of Israel, if a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, so she falls under her father until she's married. And then the father gives her over when she says her wedding vows. The father must approve that transition. And her father hear her vow and her bond wherewith she had bound her soul. And her father shall hold his peace at her. Then all her vows shall stand and every bond wherewith. She had bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she had bound her soul shall stand and the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. And if she had at all a husband when she vowed or uttered out of her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. So the husband becomes her head once she's married, or has sexual intercourse with a man. So in the Puki, or under the Puki and Ray Ray principle, our wives are defiled. Our bride is defiled, which defiles her mind. Her spirit is, is defiled or intermingled with spirits of other men through sex or their sperm. That's why when we read Jeremiah 3, it tells us that. Jeremiah 3, where we get the term Mother Earth, which represents the woman. Jeremiah 3 and 1, they say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. So the daughter of Zion committed spiritual fornication, adultery. Just like when a man has sex with his wife, he marries her through the act of sex. That's marriage. If she allow other men's sperm or seed to penetrate her, she is defiled with these men's spirits. So... The man was created to choose a future husband. 
Husbands were created to choose future husbands, not you. And this is why the Lord has set up teachers in these last days, the men. When we read Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel 34, that the the flock of my pasture are men. I believe it was Ezekiel 34, the last few scriptures there. Set up teachers in the last days, Isaiah 30, verses 20 through 21. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to you. How about Shimmy? How about Shine? By Shimmer Conkadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. The Pookie and Ray Ray principle. Your future wife will be abused through overmuch liberty, defiled. And then you're expected to go in with full value, full energy. Top price, a high value man for a 1967 Pinto. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Shalom, Barack Thum, Kwam Yashawala, and the Bob the Ball. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.